Well, Riot finally came through. After begging them to do something for months and months, they gave Chamber a real nerf. But if everything was 100% fixed, I wouldn't be here talking to you right now. Because the question still remains, is it enough? Before I get into it, I just want to remind you guys to like the video, subscribe to the channel, and turn on notifications so that you don't miss the next time I complain about Chamber, which will probably happen again. Alright, so in case you've been living under a rock, Chamber has been a bit of a problem in Valorant. Ever since his release, he's taken every Sentinel and Jet player's jaws by fulfilling both of their roles better than any other agent. He's the most oppressive character in the game. Back in May, Riot tested out an initial Chamber nerf that took away one of his trademarks, but nobody had any f clue why they were doing it. Barely anyone agreed with the change, but Riot went ahead with it anyways. And honestly, it didn't really change much, especially in pro play. Looking like a very strong ascent right now. Winning their jewels, getting the reads, all pieces of that puzzle are just working out like the biggest piece. What? I've seen it! Down a. You might as well form an entire picture with a puzzle piece of CNED. You don't need anybody else. He completes a whole team. At Masters Copenhagen, Chamber players continued to dominate. The top four teams all had cracked Chambers who we expected to pop off. This agent's strong suit has always been in the first kill department, and that trend continued in Copenhagen. To help paint the picture a little better, here are some Copenhagen stats from Valorant analyst Willminder. On the left, we have the top 10 players in first blood percentage on the attacking side, and on the right, we have the top 10 players for the defending side. You might have noticed that there's a lot of Chamber on those lists. My boy Ominous also noted that Jet had her lowest ever pick rate at an international event throughout Masters Copenhagen. If Chamber killed Jet upon his release, then this felt like he was really burying her. But why does this matter? Most of us hated Jet dominating the meta too, right? Well, the problem, aside from just agent diversity, is that, at least for me, Chamber's just boring to watch. Seeing someone hold an angle, get a pick, then TP out without getting traded is just frustrating to watch. There's very little counterplay, which makes it predictable for spectators. And the issue was that Chamber could do this up to seven times per round, if the round went the distance. So that's why Riot began testing additional nerfs on the PBE a couple weeks ago. The proposed changes nerfed his rendezvous cooldowns, the slow duration on his ult and trademark, the cost of his ult, and the cost of his headhunter. And I think everyone was happy to finally see a proper nerf in the works. Some people even thought that these changes would help prevent him from being an essential pick on certain maps. Ultimate costs one more point. That's good. Bullet cost increased 150. That's good. I think that now Chamber clearly has, you know, downsides. There's clearly weaknesses to Chamber now uh, that, you know, might make you want to pick something else, particularly on certain maps. And I think that that is the big thing, right? He might be irrelevant for like a few maps, but he definitely won't be relevant for like all the maps anymore. Um, just because uh, that is it's mainly the TP radius nerf that really kind of like uh, hurt him the most. The TP radius is the hardest hitting nerf. Not to mention like all the other small ones, but the TP radius really kind of like in the midst of angles you can play. Fast forward to this week and these nerfs are now live and the community at large has been celebrating the death of Chamber. But I gotta ask, is he really dead? I've been testing out these nerfs the past couple of weeks and it's definitely a nerf, but it's honestly not as bad as I expected it to be. You need to be aware of the rendezvous radius change when taking fights, but it didn't take me long to get used to because the distance between both anchors wasn't nerfed. I'm still able to place them in all the same spots that I used to. Obviously, you won't be purchasing as many headhunter shots as you used to, but since the cost of his trademark wasn't nerfed, you still only need 4,100 credits to get a proper buy with Chamber. And what I mean by that is full armor, a right and his trademark. If you don't count Headhunter, he still has one of the cheapest kits. So although I think it's a step in the right direction, I would honestly consider nerfing the cost of his trademark in the future. As for the slow duration on his trademark, I think lowering it to 6 seconds is good. That lasted an eternity before, so I think it's completely fair. Lastly, we have his ult. True to Forest now costs an extra ult point, but I didn't really notice it that much. If you're playing Chamber and you're doing what you're supposed to, which is getting kills, then you'll likely still get your ult back pretty fast, and it's still busted in the right hands. So, like I said, I think these nerfs are definitely a step in the right direction, but Chamber is still pretty strong and definitely viable in my eyes. Some people still think he's broken too. It did not do anything to Chamber. I was playing yesterday, Chamber's the same agent. He's just, I don't know what, I don't know what they need to do, but he's still, he's still Chamber. He is still as strong. He's still, he's still crazy. Ideally, we all want agents who do well in certain situations at certain times and on certain maps. 
and this should help him become more like that rather than an essential pick across the board. Although a lot of us would have loved to see him get nerfed to the ground, I think we'll continue to see Chamber in matchmaking and pro play for now, so you'll definitely still find me insta-locking him for now. But like, I hate him so much because I know he's so good and I like am forced to still play him. <laughs> that's, how, that's how I wanted it to sound like, the stupid f***ing dumbass brain dead agent. <laughs> should I do it like that or should I do it a bit softer?